on Zoom. Welcome to the Development Planning Sustainability Committee, uh, Tuesday, February 2nd. I'm Councilman Tony Brancatelli, Chairman of the Development Planning and Sustainability Committee. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Brancatelli. Present. Harrison. Cleveland. Griffin. Here. Washer Jones. Here. McCormick. Present. Blight. Present. Thank you very much. Uh, the, this Development Planning Sustainability Committee hearing is being held during the COVID-19 emergency declaration in accordance with Ohio's open meeting laws as amended by HB 404. This meeting is being held using the Zoom platform as being live streamed on YouTube and on Cleveland's Channel 20. It also can be seen on Cleveland City Council website and from Council's Facebook page. In accordance with Ohio open meeting regulations as amended by HB 404, notice that this committee hearing was publicly posted. This committee hearing will be conducted as all committee hearings in accordance with Council's Roberts Rules of Order and the chair will facilitate the meeting and call on persons to speak. If you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand option on Zoom and please limit your comments to the matters before today's committee. As is usual practice, any actions to be voted on during this committee will be done by voice vote, called and recorded by the committee clerk as required by Rule 15. We have uh, three zoning pieces and then uh, other legislation. Um, so this is a public meeting for Ordinance 15 2021 by Council Member Griffin, changing the use area and height districts of parcels of land west of East 105th Street between Cedar Avenue and Quebec Avenue, map change to, to 2618. Um, who do we have here from city planning for uh, this? Um, Shannon Leonard is signing in now. Okay. Good morning, Shannon. I have to take yourself off mute. Good morning, I apologize. I didn't have the invite this morning, so I apologize for the delay. Oh, no problem. You're first in the agenda. This is our public portion. I just read ordinance 15 2021 by council member Griffin changing the use area and height districts of parcels of land west of East 105th Street. You're on. All right, let me share my screen. Oh. Can we please allow her to share, please? All right, give her a shot. We got gotcha. you. Oh. Can you hear me? We got gotcha. you. I apologize with flipping several things. Okay. So this is for the uh, corner of Cedar and East 105th Street. Um, so I will walk you through this rezoning uh, proposal. All right. So the purpose of this rezoning is really just to consolidate a hodgepodge of zoning districts. Um, to align with the citywide 2020 plan as well as the uh, Innovation Square Redevelopment Master Plan. Um, this was in consolidation as a request from Fairfax Development Corporation, the neighborhood planner for this area, as well as Councilman Griffin. Um, really, we just want to promote sustainable site design by addressing both the East 105th and Cedar. Uh, right there, this really, really want to activate this uh, gateway node into the neighborhood. Um, as well as to ensure that future development includes uh, a diverse housing typologies, as well as a mix of pedestrian oriented neighborhood retail uses. <clears throat> um, so the current zoning and permitted uses include two family residential, multifamily residential, local retail business um, and residential office. And really just to bring this in line with uh, the plan for this area, as well as the development proposal at the corner of East 105th and Cedar, uh, we are proposing to change the zoning. So I'm gonna walk you through each uh, section of this rezoning proposal um, uh, via the colors on the map. 
And so the first part we'll talk about here is this large, uh, several parcels here uh, that are vacant, uh, that lines the corner of Cedar East and 105th Street. And really the proposal here is to just change it uh, to fix a split zoning issue between resident office as well as local retail. When you have split zoning across uh, a single parcel, what happens is the most restrictive zoning applies. So in this case, if we left the zoning as is, it would remain as resident's office. It would not allow for the development that is being proposed here, which is a large, uh, very large chain grocery store that is a welcome uh, addition to this neighborhood as well as residential. And so we're really just proposing to change this area to limited retail that would allow residential as well as the grocery store, but it would also limit it to, uh, to keep nuisance uses away should this development not move forward. It would also activate the node and ensure that the future development is pedestrian oriented. Um, as you can see on the right hand side of your screen, uh, these, the, the parcel, the very beginning several parcels are vacant uh, next to a church. Uh, and then down just south along East 105th Street are several uh, infill parcel opportunities. The second section here that we'll talk about is the purple uh, along East 105th. And really we're just going to change this to limited retail. The only difference between this section and the Northern section is the height. Uh, the height district in the pink section was three, which would allow up to 115 feet the proposal is not to be 115 feet, but that does give them the maximum capability to develop going forward. Along East 105th Street, we are proposing limited retail as well, but bringing the height down to two to kind of be a buffer into the neighborhood, uh, the more residential character of the inner parts of the neighborhood. And really, we just want to ensure that the future development aligns with the Innovation Square master plan here, as well as offer diversity in neighborhood retail and type housing. Uh, the Innovation Square master plan is also on here. You can see there's a mix of housing, townhomes, as well as uh, some very small neighborhood retail on first floors. Uh, the next section here is a mix of two family and multifamily as is, and we're really proposing here to be multifamily um, residential, and that's really to replace some of the two-family residential to align more with the neighborhood character that is actually existing, as well as to promote appropriate and flexible in housing, infill housing with a variety of housing options. So that would include single family, two family, as well as townhomes and some multifamily as there's some existing multifamily buildings, as you can see in the lower left-hand corner along East 103rd Street. And the last section of this rezoning is adding an urban form overlay along uh, Cedar and East 105th Street. And this really just ensures any new infill development will activate that anchor node at East 105th Street to the community. It'll create a high degree of walkability. It'll require pedestrian oriented building features and it'll enhance public safety by minimizing conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians at that large intersection of East 105th uh, and Cedar. And so that is the proposal here. We are proposing to change the zoning to limited retail and multifamily, uh, limited retail along East 105th and Cedar, adding that urban form overlay that helps uh, activate the, that, that, that streetscape, make it pedestrian oriented for any of the new infill development. We're also adding multifamily residential, which would serve as a buffer from the larger, more dense areas along East 105th into the uh, center of the neighborhood, which is more single and two family. Any questions? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Shannon. Um, this is the uh, uh, public portion of this meeting. Um, Madam Clerk, did you get any comment on 15-2021? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I received a call from John Hill requesting additional information. And uh, did he leave the uh, contact information? Contact for him? Contact information. Okay, and uh, uh, was there any specific objection or comment or just asking to be uh, get more information? No, he only wanted uh, additional information, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, the, uh, I, I, I will work with uh, uh, Shannon and the councilman, uh, councilman sponsor on this, uh, Councilman Griffin, to make sure we reach out to him. Did we have any other uh, uh, comments on this uh, piece? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll, we'll close the public portion. Um, Councilman Griffin. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm urging everyone to support this. 
I will uh, reach out to Mr. Hill, know him and his family very well, as well as his mother before him. Uh, um, so very familiar with uh, the Hill family. A lot of the residents that have called in the area have just been curious about um, you know, making sure how they fit into the plan. So that's one of the things we've been very intentional about making sure the residents understand uh, that we, you know, that they are going to be included in the plan. This is not about displacement. Um, these are majority, a lot of empty parcels uh, that we're rezoning. This is very critical to what we want to try to do to try to have a mixed use, mixed income uh, area on 105th and uh, Cedar. As you know, we're really working hard to try to focus on population increase um, in the area, and this will help us along that way. Uh, we've gotten a lot of investment from uh, Cleveland Clinic as well as other investors in the area, so we're really working close uh, with Cleveland Clinic and Fairfax and the city of Cleveland to make something very special on this corner. So I would urge all my colleagues to support this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Councilman, and certainly uh, 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 thank you for all your great work. And as we've been seeing these uh, these changes and overlays and the development of this district uh, are really taking hold. So uh, um, congratulations. This is a, a great, great change in our, in our city. I do not see any other hands up um, for any other comments. Um, with that, uh, Ordinance uh, 15-2021 stands approved as read. Thank you very much. Uh, the next piece we have up, uh, Shannon, is ordinance number 20, 2021, by Council Members Mooney, establishing the Halloran Design Review District along West 117th Street, South of Lorraine Avenue to Highland Avenue, as shown on the attached map, map change 2620. Uh, Shannon, you're up. All right. Is this for the design review one you said? Yes, it is. Let me skip to that page, I apologize. Oh, sorry. Okay, there we go. So this is uh, map change 2620. This is in line with the next ordinance that you, I believe you have on your agenda for 2619th, which incurs a rezoning for this same section of West 117th Street, south of Lorraine. So first of all, we're, we're proposing to establish the Halloran Design Review District. Um, design Review Districts, as you know, are across our city on our major corridors. The purpose of them is to protect property values and enhance the character and visual image of our neighborhoods. Um, they promote dense walkable mixed use neighborhoods. It guides development through the city processes more efficiently. It promotes sustainability and equity within our communities. Um, it's designed to improve the walkable characteristics of all building types, residential all the way to industrial. Um, it's mostly on our arterial corridors, such as Buckeye, Lorraine, um, other parts of West 117th Street, Detroit, um, et cetera, as well as it's for all new construction, exterior alterations, building demolitions and signs. Um, this is just an overview of our design review uh, districts or committees across this uh, particular one will go into the far west area of the city's design review districts um, division. And so really the goal here is to establish uh, this design review district. Um, we named it Halloran Design Review District because of the large city park here called Halloran Park. Um, and this really just ensures that any new development and exterior alterations will complement and enhance the character of the surrounding neighborhood and existing businesses. Um, and so this is the area of the location which also follows the rezoning that you will see in the next presentation. Um, and really just establishing this design review district. This area is south of the Lorraine Avenue Historic District. And it really hasn't had a lot of, um, uh, you know, attention put into it in terms of design and walkability as what the community has been requesting to see here, especially around this very popular and large um, oak area uh, that is the Halloran Park. And so this is the proposal, just uh, adding, this will make more sense in the next presentation when I go through the rezoning. Uh, but again, this is really just establishing the Highland Design Review District here, uh, south of West uh, Lorraine Street down to uh, Highland Avenue. Any questions? I think you're muted. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, this was also a public 
piece. Uh, was there any comments on this? No, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll close the public comment. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, Council Member Mooney is on this call. Councilman Mooney, are you? I'm, I'm trying to screen through these. I do not see Councilman Mooney. And this was uh, actually uh, instant asked, the quest was through Councilman Mooney um, and the local CDC at this location. Um, I have one hand up, Councilman uh, Joe Jones. Councilman Joe Jones, you're up. Yeah. Did you hear me, Mr. Chairman? M Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, yeah. J just a point of um, uh, clarification or, or information, Mr. Chairman. Uh, where are we actually on the agenda? I just got in here, so I'm trying to figure it all out. I know that we did. We passed off one of these. Yeah, so we're on uh, uh, ordinance number 20, 2021. Council okay. Member Mooney, uh, the Halloran Design Review District. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, that, that's it. Okay, thank you. I do not see any additional hands up for this piece. Uh, thank you, Shannon. Um, ordinance number 20, 2021 is approved. Um, and uh, next up is ordinance number 21, 2021 by Council Member Mooney, changing the use area and height districts of parcels of land along West 117th Street, um, south of Lorraine, Avenue to north of Milan Avenue, map change 2619. Remarks uh, by Shannon. All right, Shannon Leonard, City Planning. So this will, this is the map change, uh, the rezoning proposal for the same area that we just discussed for the Halloran Design Review District to kind of help bring some of that together. Um, so the proposal was brought to us by the councilmen as well as the CDC. And really the purpose is just to align existing and future land uses with a citywide 2020 plan as well as other neighborhood plans for this area. And is to ensure that future development is consistent with the residential and retail character of this corridor. So there's a little bit of a mix along this section of uh, West 117th Street, south of Lorraine. Um, so the current zoning and permitted uses here is a mix of two family, multifamily, local retail and resident office. Um, and so two family allows one family and two family, multifamily allows one family, two family, multifamily and townhomes by right. Local retail is more your neighborhood uses and residence office is a mix of residential with office. Um, so we're really just proposing to move this forward to change these areas to local retail um, to consolidate some of the mix of uses um, that doesn't really make sense for this stretch of West 117th Street, as well as adding general retail to some of our legacy um, autom automotive uses and so that they can kind of move forward with um, improving their properties. Um, so I'll walk you through each section. So this is the first section that we're proposing to change to general retail business C1. This is really just to uh, align with an existing legacy land use. Um, this is the uh, former West Park auto center that did uh, auto repair and sold cars as an accessory use. Um, recently, there was about a little over a million dollars pumped into this site to refurbish this area, to redevelop it, and to use it as a uh, auto um, auto sales. And we would like the councilman would like them to go forward with this proposal, whereas going reverting back to the historic legacy of a gas station, uh, the neighborhood really doesn't want to see a gas station at this location. They would prefer this use, and so we're really just proposing to change this back to general retail so that this business owner may move forward. Uh, the next section here is also general retail business. This is a legacy gas station. Um, the community would really like to see improvements at this location and without changing the zoning, they'd be kind of hamstrung into not being able to improve, which has kind of kept them back from improving all of uh, for the last 15 to 20 years. Um, and so the, the councilman would really like in the neighborhood would like to see this at general retail business as well. The next section is the purple that you saw on the map, which basically stretches from Fidelity down to Highland outside of those two general retail uses is proposing a local retail. We do skip over the areas that are predominantly residential, single family and two family in nature, but really just bringing them in line with the neighborhood plans for this area. So we would like to change the resident office to local retail to match the current land uses along West 117th Street. These are some just aerial uh, views. As you can see, there's a lot of neighborhood retail dental offices 
things of that nature. And so we really just want to bring the zoning in line with the existing land use, but also to provide uh, the neighborhood retail as a buffer to the residentials um, outside the West 117th Street corridor. And again, this is further down the street, uh, south on West 117th and changing this resident's office back to local retail. Um, you'll notice that there is a section here of local retail already. The only difference is, is upping the area district from a C into a D. And that is so that any infill development in some of these uh, parcels that are vacant or not being used to their highest utility uh, can be redeveloped uh, appropriately in today's building climate. Uh, the next section here is from Thresh down to Highland is also proposing to change uh, the mix of multifamily local retail and resident office all to local retail D1. Um, you'll notice in the multifamily section south of Halloran Park, um, but also serves as a buffer to the single family residents along the uh, west side of Highland. We are bringing the height down to a one height district from a two height district to allow 60 feet. The building here that is existing is nowhere near 60 feet um, and the residents that align Highland Avenue would like to see the height brought down to 35 feet. Um, there's no need for 60 feet building at this location south of the park. Um, and then the next section here is a zero foot specific map setbacks directly south of uh, Lorraine. That is the Lorraine Avenue Horse Historic District. And in this section, the building structures are, that are already existing do come to a zero foot lot line. And really we're just adding this setback so that any new infill development that goes in will create a high degree of walkability and will require pedestrian oriented building features and enhancing the public safety by minimizing vehicle uh, and uh, pedestrian impacts. And so we really want, so any type of new development that goes in here can kind of meet the building configuration and the streetscape that actually already exists. And so this is the proposal for the, uh, for West 117th Street. The sections that you see on the west side of West 117th Street uh, to the north, those are residential districts. Those are all uh, currently single family, two family homes. And then south of along the section of Halloran Park, you may wonder, well, why didn't we change that to open space recreation. And we, we considered that, but there is a fire department there on the corner of Lynette uh, that has been there. Uh, it's city owned property and it's been there for quite some time. Um, fire departments are not allowed in open space recreation by right. Um, and so we're just, we left the park as is under that two family zoning district. And that is the proposal really just to activate this area of West 117th Street for any new development, as well as to allow those legacy automotive uses to remain, but also adding that design review district that would allow uh, them to have, the city to have and the community to have more uh, impact and um, communication with the business owners to bring this area of their neighborhood in line with their desires and the citywide plans. Any questions? Um, thank you, Shannon. Uh, pretty comprehensive. I know you guys have been working on this for quite some time and uh, cleaning this up will go a long way along that major corridor. Um, this is the public portion. Uh, Madam Clerk, did you get uh, comments or questions regarding 21-2021? I did not, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. We'll close the public portion. Um, and I have one hand up uh, so far, Councilman Joe Jones. Councilman Joe Jones, if you can unmute yourself and get on camera, please. Yes. Mr. There Chairman, thank you. Sorry about that. Trying to get the technology all together here. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, to um, um, uh, the distinguished lady, you are the city planner for uh, Council Member Mem uh, Mooney uh, concerning this, uh, these both, oh, actually it's the same ordinance, 2021 and 2021, both design review district changes. One changes the use of height for the district parcels. And the other one just gives you a general idea of, 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 the, of the legal establishing what that should look like. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman, to the director or to the, the planner? Uh, Mr. Councilman Jones, my name is Shannon Leonard. I am the city planner in the uh, zoning section of city planning. So I work with uh, all of you fine council folks uh, as well as the CDCs and each of the neighborhood planners for each section of the city uh, doing rezonings and legislation across the city of Cleveland. Okay, great, great. I, I, would, I would love to, um, I have a, a series of questions I wanted to ask you. 
But uh, in the meantime, I'd, I'd like you to take my number down so I won't uh, delay uh, the next piece that's coming up. Um, my cell phone is 216-355-0017. This is Councilman Joe Jones. That's 216-355-0017. I'd like to talk a little bit more about in depth of these. Uh, the one question I do have uh, with the zoning and the height variance change, uh, are we looking, uh, do we have uh, on the books right now or any pr proposals to do development along these corridors right now as it stands? So this section of West 117th, uh, there, I, I am not familiar with any proposals of development along uh, this section. What really triggered this is you have two very, uh, a long-standing existing grandfathered in automotive uses at the corner of Lynette and Thrush. And the neighborhood would really like to see these uses uh, to be something specific. In the case of Lynette, they would prefer a uh, car lot instead of a gas station. And at the corner of Thrush, you have a gas station that has been there since the early 40s, I believe and even further back, but the existing gas station that is at that location has been there for quite some time. Um, and the city would like, the neighborhood around here would like to see improvements to uh, that existing gas station to bring it more modern, um, to clean up the lot, to add some landscaping, to expand and to have some retail options there. And so for them to be able to do that, the, rezone, the zoning needed to, to uh, be advanced back to general retail, which is what it was all the way up until about 2008 or 2009. And so the same with Lynette, there was a, um, that has always been a repair shop that sold uh, cars as an accessory use. Um, and it was eventually sold, that goes all the way back, I believe until about 19, uh, 1942, I believe is the property uh, records show as being the West Park Repair Center. And so there was some significant investment made into that property to bring it more modern, to landscape, to add fencing, to be a buffer. Um, and the neighborhood around really just wants that to be used as what the current owner has proposed it to be used. Um, because the other option is if they didn't change the zoning, were not approved at planning at Board of Zoning Appeals uh, for that use. Uh, they would they they could be grandfathered in to be used as a gas station, which is what it was years ago. And so uh, the community really had an input on this rezoning. Um, and then the other sections are really just to consolidate those resident offices to be more uh, local retail to match the current land uses and to serve as a buffer for some of those residential uses that are also along West 117th Street, as well as the park there that is very popular. I see. And um, that, that, that appreciate you. Um, in fact, you uh, stirred up some ideals and concepts of uh, maybe some um, changes as well as in our community. So uh, I would, I look forward uh, to uh, speaking with you. Uh, and I appreciate your thorough explanation of um, these proposed changes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you very much for your leadership. And I really appreciate Mrs. Leonard's thorough explanation of this. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, I do not see any additional hands raised. Um, no additional comments. Uh, ordinance number 21-2021 stands approved as read. Um, Shannon, quick uh, question. Um, uh, thank you for uh, uh, your uh, presentation. Um, should we be sending, uh, Kimberly, be sending you notice about uh, when these pieces come up so we can get these uh, presentations in advance? Yeah, so I, I, I normally send them. The problem that we're having is um, because I am pregnant, I am working from home due to COVID. Um, and so I can only send presentations up to a certain size in email to you, okay, uh, Kimberly, as well as into, I believe, Albert. And sometimes they go through and sometimes I think that they just don't go through. And we've tried to work with IT, I'm only allowed a certain amount to send to people and certain people only allowed a certain amount to receive. Okay. So I think there's that, there's, that's where there, that gap is. And I apologize, okay. I've, I've tried to compress them as far as possible. Um, I'm not really sure any other way to get them to you guys. So um, uh, uh, the pregnancy is not a problem. That's an opportunity. Um, it's uh, any population to our city is always good. Um, <laughs> Thank you. The, uh, and maybe we can work out uh, drop boxes or some other fashion that uh, we can, without having to send it uh, directly. Yeah, I'm not sure. We, I know that um, 
Albert nor Kimberly had a Dropbox account. I don't know if council has a Dropbox account. Um, uh, yeah, that's but, certainly something we can try to figure out. Yeah, Joe, Joe Titron does that on a regular basis for our DPS uh, stuff because some of the files he sends are pretty large. So um, we'll, we'll work through that. I just wanted to get that point and we'll, we'll circle back. Thank you very okay, much. Perfect, thank you. All right, thank you very much. That ends the zoning portion and we'll now move on to our legislative side. Um, ordinance number 41-2021 by Council Members Brancatelli and Kelly by Department of Request. Authorize the Director of Economic Development to enter to a job creation incentive program grant agreement with Quicken Loans, LLC, or its designee to facilitate the purpose of uh, and provisions of this ordinance. Uh, this is uh, Director Ebersol. You are up and introduce your guest, please. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, with me today uh, from the uh, Quicken Loans team is uh, Wendell Robinson with Quicken Loans and their counsel, Michael Bowen. So I'll turn it over to them in a minute. Um, to talk a little bit more about the opportunity here. Um, but just to introduce the ordinance, um, this was an opportunity that was brought to uh, our attention with um, uh, Jobs Ohio as well. Um, Quicken Loans, uh, as, we, as we know, um, is a huge uh, financial services mortgage company with offices throughout the, um, throughout the country. Um, and they are, have been uh, looking at expanding um, their operations in, in the FinTech space and FinTech is, is a abbreviation for financial technologies. And what it really means is finding new ways to use uh, our phones and our um, uh, computer and uh, social media to uh, market products and to better provide services to, to the consumers that they work with. Um, and so this is, this is a, a great opportunity for us um, because this is really kind of the cutting edge the leading edge of the company that uh, they were looking to expand. And so uh, we, we responded to, to the request um, with, uh, with the proposed incentive, which is a, a five-year um, job creation grant. Um, the job creation incentive grant is half a percent of a uh, new payroll to the city of Cleveland um, over a period of five years. The projected uh, job growth is uh, 700 jobs over that period. Um, about uh, 52 and a half million dollars in payroll by the time we uh, we reached the um, we reached the uh, the peak employment and so um, all told over this five year period we we should expect to see a, an increase of income tax of close to five million dollars in collection um, as a result of this expansion so um, so this is, incentive is designed to uh, help uh, help the company make the decision to locate in Cleveland, which we're, we're um, you know, pretty excited about. And again, um, you know, the way the job creation incentive grant is structured is this is a, uh, you have to earn it to get it um, in type of incentive. So if there is, uh, you know, if payroll projections come in underneath, um, then the incentive becomes smaller in, in relative proportion and scale. So um, we're excited about this opportunity and uh, I'll turn it over to the, uh, to the team from Quicken Loans to talk a little bit more about uh, their expansion and their 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 uh, their goals for uh, for their uh, hit their uh, site at the Higby Building here downtown. So, uh, Wendell, Michael, take it away. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Wendell Robinson. I'm the Senior Director of Government Affairs for Rock Central, which is the administrative services arm for the Rocket family of companies. Here in Cleveland, the Rocket family includes Quicken Loans, the Cleveland Cavaliers, Amrock, which is a title and appraisal services company, as well as Bedrock, which is our real estate investment firm. Um, we're excited to be here today to talk about this great opportunity that uh, the Department of Economic Development, thank you, Director Ebersol, for putting this together for us. Uh, we're here to talk about the opportunity to bring 700 new jobs to the city of Cleveland. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about this opportunity for us and why we're here. As you all know, uh, Quicken Loans is based in Detroit, Michigan. That is where the majority of our team members are located. Uh, when we consider expanding our workforce, we are constantly evaluating what opportunities are available to us in what we call our four home cities. That's Detroit, Cleveland, Phoenix, Arizona, as well as Charlotte, North Carolina. As a lifelong Clevelander, I have a special place in my heart for this town. And so when we were looking at expanding for the company, I of course put the flag up for the city of Cleveland 
and immediately was faced with trying to explain why Cleveland's a better option than Detroit or Phoenix or Charlotte. I can do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Chairman. So one of the things we did was we talked to the Greater Cleveland Partnership about the potential of what can we do to try and put our thumb on the scale for the city. And the partnership was very helpful in connecting us with Director Ebersol and the city to look at what options are available. And so when presented with the package that the director gave us, I was able to convince our folks in Detroit that this is the best option. And so we're excited about adding these jobs to Cleveland over the next couple of years. This is going to add about $50 million in total payroll to the city's coffers, which I think is great and adds another 700 team members for us. And what that means as it relates to what those people are doing, they're financial services professionals. And in our industry, that requires a level of professional training that includes licensing. The licensing and training alone are worth a couple of thousands of dollars per year because we have continuing education as well as renewal on licensing. Our company pays for all that for our team members. Additionally, when they're going through that training with us, they are being compensated. They're being paid for that. These jobs, by the end of the first year, typically, in general, average at about $75,000 a year in their first year. Now, here's the great thing about these jobs. They do not require a college education. So when we are looking at the potential for how we can add good, well-paying jobs to the city, this is a great option for that. The last thing I would add as it relates to those jobs is that you will notice that currently we've got cross-country mortgage, union home mortgage, all of them are adding operations in the city. Now, unfortunately, we are actually training people that they are gonna come and poach and take from us. And I hate to say that, but what we are doing is we are creating a web of high quality financial services jobs for the community. We're very excited about it. Our organization in our Cleveland office over the last decade has been always in the top 10 of the Cleveland Plain Dealers top workplaces. Um, additionally, the things that we're excited about for these, these jobs and the offices that will be located in the Higby building on the fourth and fifth floor over by Tower City is that they will be contributing to our economy on, a, on an ongoing basis. We're very excited about this, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you. Um, uh, Michael, did you have anything additional you wanted to add? No, I just wanted to thank council for moving this swiftly. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a great opportunity. I think uh, being able to get into the Higby space and activating more employees at Public Square is just a, a tremendous opportunity. Um, uh, I, I'm uh, very familiar with Quicken Loans and uh, know a number of your team members. Uh, um, having been in a uh, financial uh, business before, um, uh, they do talk about your training opportunities that you provide, and um, I know you have a very diverse workforce. Um, so it's a great representation of our region. Um, with that, I, I have a, a first question from our council president, uh, Council President Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, appreciate your hearing this today. Um, this is really um, welcome news when we're in a, a really difficult financial you know, crisis right now to be able to look at the prospect of, of retaining and adding you know, 700 high paying jobs. And uh, I think that in addition, the reuse of the space is another tremendous benefit of this. What I would like to ask, my only question is, um, well, just another positive in terms of, you know, vitality and, and, and really just kickstarting the, the economy. You know, we, if the build out here, the addition of these jobs that's happening at around the same time frame as the Sherwin Williams project. I mean, there's a, there's, there's a, we need something like this as we come out of this pandemic, as we come out of this recession. So I'm, I'm thrilled about that. My question is this, um, one of the most intriguing parts of this is the notion that these are high paying skilled positions that they will train and you don't need a college degree for. Is there a portal, is there a mechanism that we can help refer um, uh, residents to the city of Cleveland? Can I hook somebody up with Rhodes High School and kind of create a, a pipeline so that we can make sure that these these the, these excellent opportunities are available to to our to our constituents. Um, sure. Uh, to to the council president, I'll I'll answer briefly and turn it over to the to the team to talk a little bit further. So, 
uh, like all the incentives we do, this will be subject to a workforce development agreement, which will uh, require the company to work with um, our partner at Ohio Means Jobs um, uh, to post for and, uh, and hire uh, people who are looking for uh, opportunities to fill these positions. In addition, um, the company already has a, a partnership with that organization, and, and I'll turn it over to them to talk about that a little further. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Council President, thank you for the question. Great question. One of the things that's really exciting about this opportunity for us is that we are now uh, have already begun conversations with Ohio Means Jobs and other recruiting opportunities to segments of the population that we really haven't had the best opportunity to engage with. So we're looking at this as a really great opportunity for us to even further diversify our workforce and you know being being in contact with areas of the community that we haven't had a strong recruiting relationship with, this is going to be a really good opportunity to do so. And happy to communicate with you and connect with you offline in terms of providing you uh, connectivity so we can look at those options. Uh, thank you. Through the chair, that, that is, that's a very exciting opportunity. I would, only, I would only ask, and I will call and we can discuss offline, if there is, Ohio Means Jobs is a recruiting mechanism, but I'd really like to encourage CMSD participation or um, try C as a, as way as a pipeline into this opportunity because you know that's we're 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 here talking about jobs and so making sure that that people from the neighborhoods people from our 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 neighborhoods and our residents get jobs so I'll give a call offline um, tremendous project and I appreciate you fighting for Cleveland I mean I don't want to lose these jobs to Phoenix or Detroit so thank you great uh, thank you Councilman uh, Council President uh, Councilman Griffin. Mr. Chair, I'll defer to Councilman McCormick. I know that this is in his ward, and then I will come after Councilman McCormick, if you don't mind. I was going to have him go last and do the wrap-up. Okay, it's up to him. I'll defer to, the, to your wisdom and <laughs> Councilman McCormick's. Councilman McCormick, is that okay? It, it makes so... <laughs> yeah, I'll yield to the chair. Um, okay. right. Coun Councilman Griffin, you're up. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll save uh, Councilman McCormick for the uh, anchor leg. He looks like he's a little swifter than me anyway. So He's, he's, he's at cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Uh, this is a big win for Cleveland. I'm excited about uh, this project. I thank uh, Wendell and Michael for really their hard work on this. Um, a lot of people don't know the time that goes into developing something as exciting as this. Um, 700 jobs come coming off of, of what we're dealing with with COVID-19, wow. Um, this is one of those things that the entire city should be celebrating. And once again, uh, the Rocket Mortgage team and um, the Rock Group uh, does it again. So thank you guys for, for uh, really pulling this together. The couple of questions that I have is, Similar to cross-country mortgage, they're really focused on trying to make investments. We know we have aging housing stock. We know we have um, issues with lead exposure. We know we have a lot of seniors and other folks that, um, quite frankly, just cannot afford their uh, home repairs. Uh, my question to you guys is, what kind of community benefit and what kind of things are you looking for to really try to help um, how does Cleveland benefit from, from this tremendous financial resource and this, fin, and this uh, FinTech that you guys are doing? How can we be a demonstration model of really trying to promote some of those products that you guys are uh, promoting in the market across the nation and really see how Cleveland could benefit from them in some kind of ex extraordinary way? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, Councilman Griffin, great question. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to give you just a little bit of background on, on Quicken Loans and the impact that we've had on the city of Detroit. We've in many ways transformed that community, not only through the jobs that we're providing, but also the impact that we've taken in terms of the interest that we have within the community, whether it deals with housing stock, whether we're dealing with the foreclosure crisis, whether we're dealing with back property taxes. These are all programs that we've taken on in the city of Detroit and been successful. 
One of the things that's great about this opportunity for us and for me as a Clevelander is the amount of emphasis this now places on the city of Cleveland within the hierarchy of my organization. We now have the Rocket Community Fund actively engaging with the city and the county talking about the kind of programs that you're describing, Councilman. So you're going to see an increased level of investment, not only in terms of the number of jobs that we're creating, but also the emphasis that we're going to be placing in terms of of workforce housing, the issue of ensuring that um, the community has the opportunity to access fintech products that they haven't had access to in the past, the opportunity for ancillary job creation that happens when we put these kind of jobs into place in our community. So all the things that you're talking about are things that we're looking at and things that we plan on doing within the community. Wendell, that's great. And I mean, I'm excited about that. I, I know what your company has done in Detroit. And, you know, really people really ought to just read and, and talk about some of the things you guys have done in Detroit. And I would just love to see that happen in some of Cleveland's neighborhoods. Um, I know my colleague, Councilman Jones and Joe Jones and others always talk about our housing strategy. And if we're gonna have one of the premier mortgage lenders in the nation, in the, in the, in the country, uh, being a part of our city's fabric, I really hope that we can look at products and things to really help with some of the aging housing stock, uh, because a lot of the things that we run into are just seniors and others that just don't have the ability to repair. It's great to have nice, new, shiny buildings, but one of the things we have to do in the city of Cleveland is we have to make sure that we start looking out for some of the people that are second, third, and fourth generation homeowners and really trying to find a way to try to bolster uh, their housing stock in this city. So I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, you said that these 700 jobs will ramp up over a five year period. My question to you is that, uh, you know, how many will we see in the beginning and how will it ramp up? How would, what is the phase in and how soon will we see the benefits of those 700 jobs? Mr. Chairman, Councilman Griffin, so year 2021, we're looking at approximately 180 jobs created within the site. Uh, 2022, we're looking at about 210. Uh, 23, it's 240. And then 24, we actually have a number in there that's 70. I anticipate that number will be higher in 24, but we wanted to kind of you know, level off the, the number over the period of time that we're looking at, which actually gets us to our 700 number prior to the five-year commitment. So we feel really good about the numbers. One of the things I didn't want to do is overpromise on what we can deliver to the city. So that's where we're at. I anticipate the number will probably be higher, but I'm not going to guarantee that because I don't want to make a promise I can't keep. That's great. And Mr. Chairman, just as a final, um, as a final, and I hope that you share this. I think you gave a great document about uh, our return, our investment for investing in this FinTech project. And you really did a great job of showing the uh, annual amount that uh, the total new jobs that we'll get, as well as the um, new total amount and what the grant amount. So for example, in 2021, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chair, and I know this is your work, um, Professor Brancatelli, but um, 75,000 is the grant amount and that'd be about 13.5. And it's a total of a 13.5 commitment from the uh, rock and then uh, 180 jobs. That's a, our return, our investment. Nobody can argue with what we're getting a return on our investment for. This, uh, so this, is, really this, this is actually Professor uh, uh, David Ebersol's uh, uh, work, oh, but you're correct. It, 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 it is $13.5 million of additional new payroll. Yeah, 13 point, so a $75,000 <laughs> investment in 2021 that will yield a $13.5 million payroll and 180 jobs. Um, yep. Mr. Chairman, you can't beat that with a stick. Um, this is something that I really just want to thank uh, Director Ebersol and Quicken Loans for doing this. I think this might be one of the best deals that I've seen come into this council. And I really appreciate, uh, you know, Wendell and, uh, and Michael for being just a great partner with the city of Cleveland City Council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm definitely in support of this project. Have uh, thank you, Councilman. And what we don't see on this uh, spreadsheet is um, all the other work that uh, uh, Dan Gilbert and his affiliated companies have done in Cleveland 
Um, uh, folks may not recall, but uh, uh, back in 2013, uh, uh, pre then President Obama had uh, made him co-chair of the Blight Removal Task Force. Um, and some of the initiatives and the technology that he had done in Detroit um, carried over into Cleveland and was working very closely with uh, uh, then uh, uh, Jim Rokakis uh, through the uh, Thriving Institute. So um, a lot of what the work that they've done to help deal with some of the housing in our neighborhoods has, uh, came from Detroit and came from the initiatives that uh, Dan Gilbert had provided us. So um, with that, uh, I, we have uh, Councilman Joe Jones and Councilman Bashir Jones and Councilwoman Cleveland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, certainly looking at this is, is, you know, I was talking about uh, Mr. Gilbert's organization just the other day. And um, to see this deal, I concur with my colleague, Blaine Griffin, as relates to this is, this is great. It's like a uh, Christmas in, uh, in, in, in February. And so this is good for the city of Cleveland. Um, I do, I would like to know a little bit more about how we get more minorities involved with uh, having the opportunity um, to get these jobs. Um, I think that this helps to stabilize our market space in downtown city of Cleveland. Uh, I've always been an advocate day one of some type of housing plan. So, you know, I appreciate uh, you, Mr. Wendell Robinson and Appreciate you, Michael Bourne, uh, for bringing this deal here. Um, I, I thank uh, Mr. Ebersol uh, for his hard work as the director to make this possible. And as we move forward, one of the challenges we have, and I'm just putting that out there, is having a good, strong housing plan in the city of Cleveland, stabilizing our housing stock and making sure that our city has a strong foundation moving forward. Uh, one of the things that I've seen in the three years since I've been on the council uh, is a transient process happening in our communities. Uh, the east side is hit particularly the hardest. And now I'm seeing my neighborhood get a little bit of that too. So, you know, working with you all, uh, looking at the numbers and seeing how we can build new, new, new properties, new homes. Uh, I don't know if your company is a part of doing any of that kind of development. Uh, but that would help to stabilize our market space. And I look forward to, to working with y'all being able to do that. Uh, in addition to looking at the jobs here, uh, I wanted to talk to Mr. Ebersol, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what are the other uh, participants that are gonna make this happen? I know that the county is gonna be involved somewhere on this and you talk about Jobs Ohio. So what are the particulars? Yeah, uh, to... Um... To the councilman's question, so um, this is we're we're the we're the leaders here, so we're the we're the first out the door as far as getting through our incentive uh, approval process. I believe that the um, state of Ohio will be uh, going through their process um, later in this month um, through uh, the tax credit authority um, for an Ohio job creation tax credit, um, and so uh, that that'll come out uh, later this month once it goes. Through through the, the state's approval process. Okay, so that's not, we have we don't have all those particulars yet. So, well, Mr. Chairman, I don't have much to say that I'm happy. Now, you never heard me um, <laughs> in, in one of your committee meetings drop a session so fast and, and not use <laughs> 15 minutes and request for another 15 minutes. Uh, but I really, this is a great plan. And so uh, I think that this is again, a Christmas in February. And I really appreciate the leadership of Dan Gilbert uh, and his executive team that's here to make this proposal and certainly look forward to working with you down the line to ensure that we uh, hire African-Americans on the job, uh, as well as look at other opportunities in the city of Cleveland for potential development, stabilizing our market space, uh, so we won't have so many transient scenarios here. I'm not sure how we can do that, how we can work together, but I just wanna put that out there. If you have any ideas on it, um, I'm all ears on listening to it. But again, uh, congratulations. And um, and I look for you coming back to the table talking about you're gonna give us uh, another 800 to 1,000 jobs. <laughs> Thank you. Great, Thank you, Councilman Jones. Councilman Bashir Jones. Thank you so much, man. This is a uh, very, very exciting. Um, really proud of, uh, Mr. Bowen over at Calfi and my very good friend, both of them are, have, have become my very good friends. Wendell, uh, been known Wendell for years and um, just to see you get into this position and not forget home. You know, it's easy to get in these positions and forget about where you came from. 
but thank you for fighting for Cleveland. And, and share the message with Mr. Gilbert. You know, I think that they have dealt, your institution has dealt with uh, for the past couple of years, a lot of, um, and some of it may be, uh, and some of it may be, um, you know, credible. Uh, there, has, oh, there has been this struggle um, or misunderstanding between the community and, and Quicken Loans. Um, I think that this is a way to really heal that, heal that, heal those issues. Um, being able to give back, you could have chosen to go anywhere. You know, Phoenix has a has much better weather at the moment than we do. Um, but Cleveland is is a place that has much more potential, I believe. So I'm just really appreciative of what you guys are doing. Um, Director Ebersole, man, you continue to hit home runs, man. Thank you for your leadership there um, and your work, man. You're doing a phenomenal job. And and in closing, you know, not only uh, Mr. Bone and I uh, and Wendell, you know, as we look at providing these jobs, but we also uh, have to provide um, financial literacy and also give people an opportunity not just to sell or become mortgage bankers, but also to purchase their own homes. So uh, in Ward 7, we have a huge initiative in trying to increase home ownership. And right now we, we, we're working with a financial literacy group, a national group called Our Money Matters that assists people because hey, you're gonna have this influx of jobs and influx of money, um, but we also have to have an influx of financial literacy so people know what to do with these resources and able to uh, not just sell homes, but be able to buy homes as well. So I thank you all so much, man, for this, man, Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage and your team. Thank you so much for investing in our city. I think it's the best investment. I think it's gonna be amazing. And we, and we want this for all people, man, you know, east side and west side. Um, and I, I guess my, my question would be uh, chair to, uh, to my friend Wendell is, you know, we have a growing immigrant population. You know, we have a growing immigrant population, you know, people who only speak Spanish or only speak Chinese, or Mandarin Chinese, different dialects of Chinese or Arabic and so forth and so on. Um, and we wanna make sure that these jobs you know, all go to, of course, uh, the highest demographics in the city, which are black and, and white people, and that's fine. But we also want to make sure the jobs, we don't get left out. Uh, the, 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 our Hispanic brothers and sisters don't get left out. Our Chinese brothers and sisters, our Arab brothers and sisters, those who usually get left out of the conversation. We want to make sure that those opportunities develop because that group wants to purchase homes too. So I guess my question to you is how are you preparing to make sure that we have people who speak different languages who are getting these opportunities and we're able to spread the word and let them know that we want them to come out and have a chance as well to get these jobs. Well, Mr. Chairman, my good friend, Councilman Jones, uh, did I send you that question? Because I'm ready to answer it for you. Um, before I get to it though, I do wanna address the financial literacy issue and just a note for you. The Ohio Mortgage Bankers Association this year is focusing on education around workforce housing. I'll be happy to connect you with them so that we can get that dialogue beginning and going. It is their primary focus in terms of consumer advocacy this year. So I'll make sure that you're connected with them on that issue. Secondarily, I'm really proud to tell you that um, our organization was one of the first mortgage providers around the country to establish something we call the language line. And the language line provides uh, mortgage bankers that can speak the language of the consumer. We have over 32 different languages available through the language line. And so we are constantly looking for speakers of a variety of languages to help us in that area. And we will definitely be out looking for individuals that can meet that standard for us. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. That, that's, that's what's going to make this uh, the international city that it once was and, and bring us back. And Quicken Loans is, is one of the biggest uh, employers that we have here. Um, and, uh, I, I'm, and this is going to make it even bigger and better. So, you know, Cleveland is being known as the um, healthcare capital of the world, but now we're also now we're also getting into this, this, this financial uh, lane. This is a, a really great thing. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, being able to put that Higby building into use um, in a major way is, is a great thing. Uh, you got a great guy over there working with you, Mr. Bowen. 
And I would just say in closing that as a city, I'm not sure how long uh, this was on the table, but we as a city have to do a better job uh, of, of moving things along a lot quicker and not allowing things to wait so long uh, to come to us, to get to us, because people are suffering right now. People are in need right now. Um, and not just this, but just in general, uh, Cleveland has to be a city that's open for business. So I'm excited. Chair, you, you yeah, honestly, man, you, you're one of the uh, the best chairs, uh, and I'm glad to be uh, I'm glad to be on this committee with you. I really appreciate your work and your consistency. And quick and loans, thank you so much for investing in our community. We appreciate it. I believe that this is going to truly heal. Uh, if we can market it the right way, this is going to really heal the divide uh, between the community and quick and loans. And um, you hiring 700 people. You're, you're changing an entire city. You're changing an entire neighborhood. And not just, you know, a $15 an hour job. You're talking about $75,000. And and listen, not only is this, I want people to be clear, it's not just a $75,000 job. It's an investment of close to $100,000 of training that's going into these individuals. That's why Wendell said, hey, you know, we could possibly lose people to other organizations. So you're talking about an investment in training and you're talking about you know, sixty, seventy-five thousand dollar job, and this is a this is an amazing thing, man. Uh, Mr. Bowen, thank you, man. Wendell, thank you, guys, man. I, I really appreciate you guys. Any way I can be of support, please let me know. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Jones. Um, and uh, uh, this was uh, just introduced last month, and uh, with Rocket Mortgage Speed, uh, went through Director Ebersol's uh, shop and had mayor approval. So it it uh, it hit it hit our uh, our committee pretty quickly. Uh, Councilwoman Cleveland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> and good morning all, uh, Wendell, Michael, uh, David. And I, I share my colleagues' um, pleasure uh, and uh, measured excitement about this project. Um, you know, it certainly is a significant investment in human capital in our community that we haven't seen the likes of and um, quite some time, if ever. Um, and I share all my colleagues' um, uh, accolades and, um, you know, for getting this done in such a timely manner. I just have a, a, a few questions I, I, I need for my own clarity. And through the chair, to our presenters, uh, first of all, uh, if we approve this, uh, and it looks like we're certainly going uh, headed in that direction, what is the timeline for, you know, getting the program up and running and, you know, off to the races to get the first 180 jobs in place and trying to get people on board? Um, to, to the councilwoman's question, we would anticipate closing out our, our documents on the, the incentive process probably about 60 to 90 days from when we uh, get the final ordinance um, uh, approved, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to the, the team on how quickly they anticipate moving uh, on the on the jobs. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Councilman Cleveland, thanks for the question. Uh, look, here's the deal. Uh, I have made a commitment that we're going to get this thing done. Um, Director Ebersol and the Department of Economic Development have been very, very helpful in terms of getting this done. Um, my organization is already in the process of recruiting individuals so we can get started with the ground running. Um, I anticipate that we will start hiring immediately. So I'm very excited about this. Like I said, um, we've taken it as, as a pledge on the, on, the, on, the, on the city's part that we're going to get this done. We believe in this city. That's why we're here. So we, we are starting right now. Thank you. Thank you, Wendell. And through the chair, um, uh, my next question, going back to the council president's uh, question and request that um, you all have an offline conversation. I'm going to ask that you, that information um, and that, that conversation happen with all of us, whether it's online or uh, email or, or, or on telephone. But, you know, we all have organizations and, and high schools that we would like to connect you with who we think would provide you with uh, great candidates for these jobs and these opportunities. Um, you know, I have the East Technical High School, 
<laughs> for one. And, you know, tri cs in my backyard and, you know, CMHA is a great partner. So the Cleveland Public Libraries, I'm, I'm just thinking of a number of organizations that we rely on when we engage in community projects uh, for our residents. And so I just want to make sure that, and I, I, again, I think all of us want to make sure that, you know, we have you plugged into everyone who can possibly help you uh, uh, with candidates for this program. Um, uh, another concern of mine is uh, just that um, you say you're already recruit recruiting candidates. Uh, a concern of mine, and I think all of us in the city is, you know, we have a significant population of people who are um, undereducated, um, you know, who have barriers to uh, getting jobs such as uh, um, a criminal conviction, you know, even misdemeanor conviction and other things that just make it harder for them than the average person to find work and find productive employment. So I I'm just wondering, um, I know you partner with Ohio Means Jobs and um, I, I just wanna make sure that there's a commitment there on behalf of our Rocket, Rocket Mortgage, um, you know, that you, um, you're, you're also going to be open to and, and work to to uh, recruit and train those those people we consider hard to hard to train or hard to employ. So, Mr. Chairman, to the councilwoman's question, I appreciate that. Um, let me give you a little bit of background on how this process works in terms of the education and licensing. One of the challenges that we've run into across the industry is um, the issue of uh, former felons applying for these jobs. There is a barrier to licensing that currently exists in some states, not in the state of Ohio, but in some states. Quicken Loans has taken it on as a national initiative through our DEI group to address this. Um, and we are working very actively actually on the ground in the state of Georgia, which is the most uh, restrictive requirements associated with it, because we see that as sort of the first domino to fall as it relates to that. Um, we understand this issue, obviously, um, with our friends in Detroit, this has been an ongoing issue, and we've been very, very successful through our licensing group to get those folks in, get them educated, get them licensed. But it is an ongoing challenge in this industry, and we see ourselves as one of the leaders. Uh, we work through the, the National Mortgage Bankers Association to take this on as well, so it's not something we take on lightly. Additionally, as a, just to address the education issue. Um, we have been actively engaged with the Cleveland Foundation on working on the digital divide issue. Um, in the city of Detroit, as an example, we provided over 300,000 uh, devices when COVID hit so that we could connect students with the classroom. Uh, we intend to you know, do the same kind of things here in Cleveland because I agree, if our workforce isn't educated, it's gonna be really hard for us to hire them. We wanna make sure that we're providing the best opportunity to the city. Um, and I hope that answers some of your questions. Uh, yes, Wendell, thank you. Thank you very much. And that's very, that's very good news to hear um, because that's certainly a population that a, a, a lot of employers don't, you know, don't, or can't touch. Um, and through the chair to the presenters, you know, um, just another uh, segment of our population, well, a, a significant part of our population, you know, by some statistics, you know, we have a, a functional illiteracy rate of uh, well over 50%. And again, um, you know, we have, we have uh, small initiatives uh, um, and, and great, you know, great programs such as Seats of Liter Literacy who are attacking that program. But um, to me, this seems to be one of those things that, um, you know, as a community, we should really be pumping a whole lot more and more resources into uh, you know, uh, a population, a city population with, um, you know, 60% functional literacy. We've got a lot of people who are, who are functioning below their capacity, below their potential. So I, um, I just wanted to put a plug into it as well that, um, you know, we look at, at folks, you know, who may not have the literacy capability at the moment. And we know that literacy does not equal intelligence or potential or, or competence or, or work ethic, and so I just like to, you know, again, put in a plug to um, in, with this particular job program, but also overall that we we, we really take a more serious look at uh, financial uh, functional illiteracy in the city of Cleveland. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, appreciate those comments, and I think you're, you're spot on in terms of having a, a you know broadening that net to try and bring in as many our organizations and uh, our affiliates that we can. To, to you know, finding applicants is that uh, human resources is a challenge, and uh, uh, right. you know they that that that's a key of uh, going someplace where you can uh, find a workforce. So that, that that's important. Uh, Councilman Harrison, uh, you have your hand raised. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Uh, I know where uh, Councilman McCormick is going to wrap us up so we can continue to move on. But uh, many of my questions have been answered. Uh, in fact, my last question, uh, Councilwoman Cleveland uh, just brought up about individuals who may have a blemish or two on their record. Uh, and to hear that Quicken Loans has taken up that initiative across the U.S. Uh, to deal with some of those barriers is amazing is again a testament of why this type of institution is great for our neighborhood and this program that we are talking about today. Uh, and a couple with some of the things that we've heard uh, are why we, we, we need more partners like this here in our community. So to Wendell, to Michael, uh, to Mr. Gilbert and company, uh, job well done, job well done, job well done. And I look forward to supporting this initiative and I'm sure uh, as we move along, some other great things will come out of this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, and then uh, uh, batting cleanup, uh, Councilman McCormick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I assume that you saved the best for last, so I appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I first want to say that I really appreciate the conversation we've had this morning and fully support and endorse um, the questions and comments of my colleagues around ensuring that our kids, um, I, I call them kids, young people, excuse me, in our neighborhoods are, are being geared up and thought of and intentionally included in, in the hiring process. I think that's a really worthy conversation to have. So I wanna thank my colleagues for that. And I fully and enthusiastically support that. And we'd love to participate in follow-up conversations. So um, uh, Mr. Chair, I you know, fully support this, this legislation. You know, a uh, couple, couple thoughts on it. You know, first and, and foremost, um, you know, an investment of 700 brand new jobs in the city of Cleveland is, is, is a, a big win. Um, we saw, you know, um, uh, great news around cross-country mortgage, um, and this is another important investment in uh, jobs for the long term in our city. Um, I is, you know, I don't need to tell anyone the impact that COVID has had um, on the employment base in, in the city, uh, as well as our small businesses, and of course, most importantly, our residents and, and, you know, the health and well-being of our folks. So um, this is one of those areas that is that COVID has really attacked hard. And um, so, so seeing this type of encouraging news of bringing in 700 new jobs into the city uh, is really welcome and excited to uh, have this in front of us today. You know, and looking, Mr. Chair, also at the, the, uh, exec or the executive summer of legislation, you know, we see new payroll here, um, you know, 13 million, 29 million, 47 as the years go along. But Chair, we know that uh, beyond new payroll, that is not the only impact that new jobs in our city have on our city. I mean, th these are fo uh, you know, folks that uh, need a place to live. These are folks that um, you know, uh, go to support local businesses uh, and enjoy the great things that Cleveland has to offer. So we know that the economic impact for these types of jobs goes far and beyond just the payroll. Payroll is important. That is something we can feel and touch and, and, and clearly understand. But obviously, you know, the other imp positive economic impacts are, is, is in my mind, just as important. Um, I know Director Dumas is focused in on that payroll number, but the, the other effects that bringing in brand new jobs to our city core um, are, are extremely important. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to make that note. And quite frankly, you know, um, I, I have got an interesting award, Mr. Chair, because I represent downtown of the Central Business District, but I also represent uh, neighborhoods on the near west side of, of the city. Uh, and one of the you know great things about adding jobs into our city core is uh, number one, you know, a lot of folks that live in our neighborhoods work in these jobs in downtown, and it's their livelihood. And the other side of it too, uh, Mr. Chairman, is we know that. Um, I, I believe the majority, I can speak from a data point of our income tax revenue that we use to, you know, plow the streets in Ohio City and uh, provide firefighters in my home neighborhood of Collinwood um, come from the tax generated from downtown. So we know how important it is, Mr. Chair, to ensure that our downtown is healthy and thriving. 
um, so that uh, not only the neighborhood is thriving, um, which I remind folks of the 20,000 residents that live there, uh, but also that we have the resources for our neighborhoods across the city, which is extremely important. Um, Chair, uh, just a couple questions um, and, and just for the general public um, to the director. Uh, so anyways, very, very excited about this investment uh, in, our, in our downtown core. Um, Chair to the director, um, this legislation authorizes a job uh, creation incentive grant up to 0.5% of new payroll in the city of Cleveland. So just so that we have information out into the public, uh, Chair to the director, um, does this piece of legislation uh, in any way impact existing tax revenue that the city of Cleveland is, is receiving? Uh, no. Okay. Chair to the director, um, does this uh, legislation, if we, we expect uh, uh, jobs above 700, that's what we're going to push for. But um, in the unlikely case, uh, chair to the director, that um, that under 700 jobs are created, uh, is the city on the line for any type of rebate uh, for any jobs that uh, in the case that are, they're not created? Yeah, to the councilman, the way that the, the grant works is every year they submit the um, amount of eligible jobs that they have and we disperse based on that amount. So if, if they don't achieve the full number, we don't disperse the full amount. Got it. So um, chair to the director, there's no threat through a piece of legislation like this, whether it be cross country mortgage or Quicken loans of the city having not, you know, the city being in, in, in the red when it comes to a piece of legislation like this. That's correct. Thank you. So uh, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, given that, you know, this not only the exciting overall uh, impact of 700 new jobs, but I'm also uh, very excited and comfortable with this legislation because Mr. Chairman, it says that, you know, uh, this is a, uh, a grant based on brand new uh, revenue to the city, tax revenue to the city. And if that tax revenue isn't met, uh, the city doesn't provide the grant. So I think that this is, uh, when we think about our fiduciary responsibility as a city, um, this is a safe piece of legislation and will only net in an increase of tax revenue for the city of Cleveland. So I'm going to wrap up, Mr. Chair. I thank, thank my colleagues for the really um, you know, important questions. I look forward to being a part of that conversation. Uh, and we, you know, openly welcome these 700 new jobs to the city of Cleveland. It's critically important. Uh, also, Mr. Chair, for access and a point that we didn't make that these jobs are in the city and that they're not in Solon or I, I need to stop naming suburbs, excuse me, that they're not in suburbs uh, 30 minutes away where folks can't get to uh, in transit or on a bike. Um, so that's another element, Mr. Chair, of this that I think is really important is that we really center our job growth in the urban core of our city. Uh, and, and there's many benefits to that. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, hearing my rambling and uh, fully support this legislation. <laughs> thank you, Councilman. I appreciate that, uh, your engagement and certainly your enthusiasm as the downtown neighborhood continues to grow. And you know, I can speak firsthand on having a major institution and how important they are to anchors in our neighborhoods. Uh, uh, third federal savings in the Slavic Village community and the Stefanski family and what they've done and how they've impacted our city has uh, been pretty tremendous. Um, I do not see any additional hands up. Um, any closing comments, uh, Wendell or Michael? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to thank the council again for uh, having the opportunity to come and, and speak with you all about this. Um, if there are any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to provide my number. Mike's got my number, obviously. He is our voice here in the city when I am unavailable. So feel free to reach out. I'm looking forward to this opportunity and thank you again so much for your help. Thank you. Um, no further questions. Ordinance number 41, 2021 stands approved as read. Let's sign it. Thank you very much. Um, we had one addendum piece that got added to our committee uh, resolution 780 2020 by council members Bashir Jones, Cleveland McCormick, Bank of Telling Kelly by department request, uh, approving the continuation of the Cleveland Superior Arts Improvement District as a special improvement district in the city, accepting petitions from owners of property in the district, approving a new plan for public services, declaring it necessary to provide safety, cleaning, and other services for the district, and providing the assessment of the cost of each work upon benefited property in the district and declaring emergency. Um, who is uh, speaking on this is Mary, are you uh, our assistant law director, Mary Connolly? Yes, I'm here. Mary um, Cornelia, I'm sorry. 
Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, so this is a renewal. The uh, Superior Arts District originally had a three-year term, which ended at the end of 2020. They are now renewing for a five-year term, um, but they are not expanding. So it's the same, the same area that they had before. Um, and that's about it, unless there's questions. Okay. Um, and this is uh, in Councilman Jones. Uh, Bashir Jones, this is your district. I think this is Kerry and I, you know, you know, for, for a while, Kerry uh, or Councilman McCormick, he, he was, he was the, uh, he was his councilman and the Ward 7 councilman <laughs> for a while. Uh, so. so tag team back again. So, uh, no, no, don't bring it back. We got a good councilman at Ward 7. He can yeah. have it. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really, first of all, I, I do want to say to, to Councilman McCormick, man, he just, uh, you know, you just 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 a just a hardworking guy, man, and uh, does a lot of amazing work. Has a heart bigger than a mountain, and uh, for many years uh, he stepped up and 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 provided comfort to to people who um, who, who needed support. So I thank him for that. Um, the Superior Arts District is a, a phenomenal group of people down there uh, who truly truly are impacting that area. Um, and, and their and their impact is is really increasing uh, past what their 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 boundaries. You know, Chair, when I got into office, I didn't know about all these lines. You know, certain CDCs say they, they can't pass this line. I'm saying, well, listen, you know, the, the, we're all Clevelanders. Everyone needs your assistance. Everyone needs your support. So um, so I'm just really appreciative of them. Uh, they're really doing a phenomenal job. They're changing that superior area. Um, and we still have some work to do. You know, uh, we still have a, a homeless population that we have to take care of and support. And we also have a growing business district. And we also uh, have this growing art district. So there's a lot of different demographics that I'm, that I'm hoping that we can continue to grow and, and respect each other and take care of one another. So I'm in, I'm in full support of this. I hope my colleagues can support this as well. They're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you, Chair. Great, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, for those in the listening audience, uh, all of these are all of these uh, improvement districts. Um, these are all part of overlays that are on our website. website. So if so anybody, if anybody wants, wants to see, to see uh, 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 their, their, their particular, particular uh, district, uh, district, they can just, they can go, just on go on, on any, any website. website. Uh, uh, Councilman Harrison, you have your hand up. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Yes, Chairman, Chairman, really, really quick. quick. Um, uh, what, what are the are boundaries, the boundaries of, the of the superior, superior arts, arts, arts district? district? Is it, is it uh, uh, a long period? period? I can speak to that. The boundaries are, um, let's see, on the north, it's St. Clair. On the west, it's East 18th. On the south, it's Payne. And on the east, it's East 26th Street. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do I have any, have any other, other uh, questions? questions? Um, no further, no further questions. questions. Resolution 780 2020 stands, stands approved as read. read. I think I that think concludes that all of our, our agenda, agenda for today. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>